All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. And right here, right now, we actually have a legendary producer and DJ. We got DJ K-Style. And, then, and also for a few moments, he has a special guest. And I'm going to let K-Style introduce his special guest that he brought on uh, momentarily for the interview. Hey, hey, what's going on, y'all? Man, this is DJ K-Style. I'm here just in the lab, just putting it down. And actually, I got my man JD here with me, my him beside of me. So, um, say what's up, JD? What's up, K Style? What's up with y'all on radio? What's up, Brandon? Immortal? DJ Immortal? <laughs> I gotta say, JD, it's been quite a while since we talked, man. I think it's only been what about a month or so. It's good. It's good to actually hear from you again, brother. And how are you, man? I can't wait to come back. I just wanted to give a shout out. To you, thank you for what you're doing for all of us, and just give you an official stamp that DJ K style be blowing up the whole West Coast right now, bro. Y'all keep your eye on me. Hey, most hey. definitely, most definitely, JD. I gotta say, man, definitely congratulations to all to all your success as well, man. You've done so much work in this past year; it's actually crazy, man. So it's actually dope just to actually see a legendary Lynch Bomb member like yourself still doing what he loves to do after all these years, man. I'm definitely excited for 2023 for yourself. Absolutely, and thank you so much. And K-Style and I got so much stuff in the works right now. K-Style and I are working on something that we just snuck the ice cube and something uh, hmm, I snuck the back in. So uh, go figure. You know what I mean? That's We're trying right. To that's right. It's just like a reunification of the West right now, man, and it has to happen. You know, and uh, I don't want to hog up K-Style's Shine time, bro. I just want to let y'all know that we got a lot of work going on, and I'm going to send you something new pretty soon for me and K-Style and for me and my boy Chap Cheese, and we could do this all over again. Hey, you already know, J.D., if you send it, we hear it out Outlaw Radio FM are definitely going to spin it. Thank you, bro. And uh, K-Style, have a good interview, bro. And my man Chap Cheese over here said to tell both of y'all what's up, West West. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Okay, now. All right, Immortal. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. But K-Style, man, this night is about you, man. So I, I got to take you back, man, to the beginning of your amazing career this far, man. And I just got to ask, man, first and foremost, what originally made you decide to venture into the music industry initially, man? Because you are in, like, what I call the hip-hop capital, man. You're in the West Coast, man, surrounded by so many legendary hip-hop artists, producers, and DJs. So what really made you decide just to venture into the music industry? Man, I'll tell you, man, I started doing this. And back in 1983, bro, man, that's when everybody was break dancing and all that type of stuff. And you remember that dude that was just sitting in the back holding the radio? That was me. I'm back there holding the radio, and my boy was like, man, we just need to get this a continuous mix just to play, man. Can you do that? I said, man, I'm going to try. I tried. I put a mix together. Just trying with my, my pop old school turntable and a tape deck. And I used to listen to the radio. I was like, man, I think I can do this stuff. And I started to taught myself how to DJ, and, and that's where it started. And and I just started having ideas, like, man, let me just try to lay this stuff down. And, and that, that's where it began. And it was just in my blood. I mean, and originally, oh, I'm a drummer, but I'm a drummer by trade. And I started playing the drums when I was seven. And it's just been in my blood, and that's where it started. And let me ask, man, because when you said you actually started playing the drums when you were seven, did you ever actually, like, implement any of your any any of your drumming on, on any of the songs that you actually did? I have, I have. I mean, I got a, a track that I did with um, with Eddie G, and I don't know if you're familiar with him. You're familiar with Lakeside, with the Lakeside, doing um, All The Way Live and uh, Fantastic Voyage. I remember Fantastic yeah. Voyage, uh, Coolio, correct? Fantastic Voyage by yeah. Coolio? Yeah, well... Yeah, well, well, the original track, is, I mean, he sampled it. The original track came from Lakeside. It's a song called Fantastic Voyage. It's, um, I mean, I don't know if y'all are familiar with that one. But the lead singer for uh, Lakeside, he's doing a solo project, and I produced that. And I did a track for him where I did live drumming on, where the drums was, was all me. And that I got a chance to just kind of put my talent out there just to show that I can do some drums. And also as well, I have to ask, how did yourself and Eddie G originally get connected, man? Because obviously, you know, you actually, like you just mentioned, you had the opportunity to put your drums actually on his music, man, and actually show the world your craft. But, like, just the origin behind that. How did yourself and Eddie actually originally get connected? Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of a crazy story, too. But he came out here to the Bay Area maybe about four years ago, 
and um and I was connected with uh, well I still am con- connected with a, a promoter out here in the Bay named Mark er- Mark Elliott, and he brought Lakeside out here, and then he was working on a track that I produced, and he got like some old school folks on there like um, Bootsy Collins. Um, uh, trying to think who was on the Ohio players, um, just some old school folks like that, and he wanted to include um, Lakeside. So they came to my studio and recorded the song, and um, that's how I ended up connected with Eddie G. And we kind of vibed and talked, and he was like, no, I'm, working, I'm trying to get some, together some of my own stuff, but I just need a producer. And I was like, I said, well, I'm the man. And we just kind of connected from there, and, you know, we just, he flew back to Dallas, and we were on the phone just making songs, and this was during the pandemic. And he was sending me tracks, sending me his vocal tracks over the Internet, and I'm just laying them down. And, I mean, we ended up producing a whole album that way. And, I mean, the album is, is, is fire right now. And I got to say as well, guy, you got to love technology because back in the day, of course, as you already know, you couldn't just send files through email and be in one, be in one state or one country. And now, now you can do anything with anyone all across the world in the comfort of your own home. It's actually kind of extraordinary. Exactly, exactly. It's kind of amazing how this, this stuff works. And you know, and it, and it, it's, it's, you know, I, I think it, it's a convenience, especially if you if you just have these ideas that you want to lay down, and you know, and you don't have a studio to go to where you can just go and you know, have to have a bunch of money to, to spend, you know, you can just go and, you know, just do it at your own home, you know, so, I mean, but, you know, but that, that's half of it, I mean, the other half of it is, you know, you have to, you know, have the talent, you have to, you know, have the know-how and know how to be able to do it, you know, just to make it sound like a record, to sound the way you want it to sound, and, you know, and there's it, a lot of folks that can do it, and, you know, and they are doing it, so, I mean, that's, you know, that, that's a blessing right there. And also as well, you are actually the CEO and founder of uh, K-Style Productions. I was wondering, what actually made you decide to launch your own production company? And of course, what services do you actually offer to the general public today? Yeah, so I mean, because I was, uh, started DJing, you know, back in the day. And, um, you know, so I was, you know, starting to buy my own stuff and get my own equipment that I needed. And from there, you know, I mean, I started getting known here around the Bay Area, just, you know, as the DJ to get or DJ to book. And so, you know, people were just calling me off the hook. I was like, I need to get my own my own equipment, my own production. You know, I mean, I just need to just go ahead and do a business out of it because, you know, I'm just getting enough calls to make this happen. And that that's where it started from. And, you know, I was just in the, I'm just in the demand then, and, you know, thank God I'm still in demand today. And I gotta say as well, you definitely have a phenomenal layout for your business as well, man. Because I noticed as well that you actually do rental equipment as well, from what I read, where you actually so if individuals want to set up a concert or a show or even a festival, you can actually provide the equipment. I was wondering for the for the listeners that are in, of course, the uh, California area and do actually want to uh, set something up for themselves, but unfortunately they don't have the proper equipment. How do they go about actually inquiring to you to actually potentially rent your equipment for a festival or their next event? Because I do know with some businesses, there's like obviously a lengthy process to rent ex- rent equipment like this, especially the expensive stuff as well. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, I, and with that, you know, I have a sound company. So, you know, anybody doing a concert, doing a party, wedding, whatever it is, you know, and if they just need a sound system, I don't have to worry about it. You know, I mean, I come there, set it up. You know, we do the front of house mix, the monitor mix. You know, we set up the whole nine. And, you know, for concerts, um, you know, you name it. I mean, I, I'm providing sound for it. And, I mean, and anybody out there that is looking for something like that, if you're in the Bay Area, you know, I mean, um, I would say, I'm not going to leave my number right here, but if you want to um, hit me, I'll get my man right here, my phone number, and then um, he can go ahead and uh, put it out there to you. You can just contact me direct, and, you know, I mean, we can do business just like that. And also as well, I have to ask as well, because I do know that you do pop-up DJ, uh, sorry, pop-up DJ services where you actually DJ events and whatnot. And since we're actually on the topic of K-Style Productions, uh, I was wondering actually what actually made you decide to actually start DJing these events? Because I do know you actually produce some phenomenal music, but as for DJing events, what type of events do you actually currently DJ? Is it, just, is it like just parties or do you do weddings as well? Yeah, you know, I'm doing all that, you know, parties, weddings. I mean, I just did a huge wedding this was past Saturday that was just out of control. And, you know, I mean, I did actually did three setups. I mean, I did the, um, the uh, ceremony, the, um, 
cocktail hour and a reception. I mean, there were huge set of was over three hundred people in there. And, you know, I mean I, I mean the set up sound systems in each location where we set that up, um, lighting, did all that. Then I brought Eddie G and he came and sang during the cocktail hour and I mean they they were just loving it. And then for the uh, reception, you know, I got kinda connected with the groom. I said, you know, I mean you need to uh, you know, I said, why don't you do this? I'm going to have um, Eddie G come back out and then sing a song. You can kind of serenade your wife, your new wife. And, you know, and that's what they did. You know, he sung that Luther Vandross song, Superstar, and killed it. And he was just like, um, you know, all they were just all starry-eyed, looking at each other, and Eddie G was just doing it. And, you know, so stuff like that, I mean, I like to do. And, you know, if they just have some production, you know, I mean, that, that's what we do. So, yeah. And then I'm also doing corporate events, too. So, you know, where I'm providing, you know, projector screens, um, big screens, um, you know, whatever you, whatever you need as far as the conference goes. And, you know, and that's a pretty big part of my business as well. So, I mean, that type of stuff is, um, you know, that's also included. And also as well, recently you actually had the opportunity to do production work uh, for Corrupt of the Dog Pound. I was wondering if you can actually tell us a bit more about that opportunity. And, of course, what was it like actually just being able to work alongside uh, Corrupt of the Dog Pound and actually just do that song with, uh, that's also featuring Eddie G, I've been a long time? Right, right. So on that one, um, you know, I mean, and that, I mean that, that was, uh, I mean, I think one of the um, times I don't think I'll ever forget. I mean, it just, it, it, I think it was a huge part of, you know, where I'm at. Um, and it, with that production, um, you know, I mean, we had this, I had the track with Eddie G, um, and, you know, we put the track together, and I just felt like, you know, we need, because it's, it's just a dance track, so I just felt like, you know, we need something, something else with this track. You know, I don't know if it needs to be a piano player or a sax player. I said, you know what, let me try to get a rapper on it, because this is that club track. And then my boy Tino Tino, he connected me with uh, Corrupt and his folks, and, um, you know, so I talked to him, and, you know, I mean, they were down to earth and, you know, just real friendly, and they was like, yeah, you know, we down. So um, they said, we'll go ahead and do it. So we um, went ahead and laid the track, and then it was like, okay, let's go ahead and film the video. And that's when we actually got a chance to just connect. And we filmed the video down in Vegas, and Corrupt came, and we ended up hanging out. We were supposed to do, do the video. We filmed that maybe about three or four hours. And then we just ended up hanging out the whole day, all night down there in Vegas. And, you know, I mean, it was just a great experience just to be able to, you know, hang with them, talk with them, and, you know, I mean, just kind of bounce ideas. And, you know, I mean, you don't run into a lot of people like that that are just, you know, you can just talk to and, you know, they're just down to earth and, you know, just like me and you. And, you know, because you have a lot of folks that just, you know, just different personalities that, you know, may not be so friendly. But, yeah, Corrupt was just one of them folks, him and his team, they, you know, I mean, they treated us well, you know, we treated them well, and it was just a good experience. So, yeah, that's one of the great experiences, I think, of um, this, my whole career, just doing this stuff. And I got to say as well, that music video that you guys actually did as well was absolutely phenomenal. I really love how well it was actually put together. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, I mean, because we kind of put that together. Um, you know, I mean, as far as, like, writing videos, I mean, my wife and I, I think, uh, I don't know, we just kind of found a click there and just, you know, just putting a video together and, you know, shout out to my wife, Andrea, um, just putting the videos together and, um, you know, just coming up with a, uh, you know, just, a, you know, so, so script and, um, you know, just how we needed to play out and, you know, how it should look. So, you know, the whoever's looking at it is getting bored and, you know, it looks like every other video. And so, yeah, we put that together and, you know, just try to make it, you know, make it for real, you know, and that's, that's how it came out. So, yes, I appreciate that. And also as well, another phenomenal song that you actually currently did work on is where you actually teamed up with uh, J.D. of the Lynch Mob, who we just actually spoke to a few moments ago, The Chill of Cop yeah. is Most Wanted, and of course, your longtime partner, at Eddie G, to actually release the single titled Out in Them Streets. I was wondering if you can actually just tell our listeners a story behind this project and, of course, what made all four of you guys actually decide to come together and release such a phenomenal, uh, powerful record? Wow, yeah. You know, and that one, uh, we, when we were down in Vegas um, shooting a video, I mean, that's when we all met, you know, because Eddie G was there. Um, and J.D., he showed up and Corrupt brought J.D. to the video shoot. And that's when I met J.D. And, um... So that's what we all kind of connected. I mean, just, you know, immediately, just that immediate 
immediate connection, like brothers. It, you know, it was, it was just an immediate connection. And so it was like, we got to do something together. And, you know, we're going to all do something together. I, I don't know what it's going to be, but we're doing something together. And we, you know, had this idea of um, this track. And I was thinking about, um, you know, kind of think about, you know, the West Coast. I want to get that West Coast feel, but I want to give it a Bay Area touch to it also. And so, I mean, I, so I came up with the track. Um, I bounced it to Eddie G. Um, he was like, man, I think I can come up with a, uh, with a hook on this. And he, uh, you know, came up with a hook. I bounced it over to JD. I said, "What you think?" He was like, "I think he had a, a burst that old that same day, a couple of verses that same day." Um, he said they played it over there at the studio to chill, listen to it. He was like, "I'm jumping on this." He jumped on it too, and I don't think a week had passed by. We had a song, and I mixed it down, and it's ready to go. And I sent that to you, too. So, I mean, it's not released just yet, but it will be releasing soon. But, you know, I mean, you can go ahead and, and premiere it. If you can bless us that way, um, go ahead and do your thing. But, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's one of them tracks. That, and it's also a summer track. So it's one that um, I think for Labor Day where people are barbecuing, riding around in their cars. You know, it's one of them type of tracks where, you know, you're sitting back eating a rib, a couple of beers in your hand, and just... Uh, doing your thing, talking about out in them streets. And I got to say as well, I definitely have that song locked and loaded as well to actually uh, to actually be played right after the interview, man. So uh, these l- listeners are going to get themselves a taste of this brand new song before it's even released to the general public. So I guess in a way, y'all get to hear it here first on Outlaw Radio FM 97.7. That's exactly, exactly. You'll be the first one. And also as well, on uh, July 29th, you actually had the opportunity to actually perform out in Oakland uh, over there at uh, Yoshi's. I was wondering if you can actually just tell us a bit more about that event that you actually DJed at. And of course, do you actually have any other up-and-coming events? That's why our, that way our listeners can purchase some tickets and come on out and see you live in full effect. Right, right, yeah. So that was an event that was here in um, Oakland, California at Yoshi. And, I mean, a lot of folks come to Yoshi's. I mean, it's, just, it's one of them venues that, you know, it's, uh, you hear everybody coming through. And um, and that spot I, I did with Eddie G. So, I um, mean, we was there with Troop. I remember Troop. And, um, and the event was sold out. And, uh, you know, so I was on stage uh, with Eddie. And, you know, I was basically his um, DJ. So, you know, I'm. You know, doing my thing back there. He was out there just serenading the ladies, and you know, just just, just making the party happen. And yeah, that 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 was a big show. You know, we kind of killed that. So yeah, that that was the Yoshi's event. Um, as far as any upcoming events, um, I mean, here in the Bay, uh, I mean, I have a couple of events coming up next month, and um, I'll have to shoot you the details on that. On um, you know, so we can try to. Anybody here in California want to get some ticket sales? And um, in, in L.A., um, so I'll be up there with Montel Jordan on October the uh, 6th, I think. Um, I'm trying to think of what else is coming up. That, um, but you know what? I'm, I'm going to get back to you on that, and I will um, have you put it out there on the air so you can, um, I can get you some ticket information. Sounds good. If you send it, I'll definitely post it up, man. But I got to say, you definitely had me at Montel Jordan, man. I wish I had that passport so I can jump on that plane and slide over there for October, man. <laughs> <laughs> but also, right. aside from these events that you actually have coming up, and of course, you know, out in them streets that is like that is currently making its way to the public, I, I have to ask, man, what is next for yourself? Uh, DJ K Styles, is there anything we happen to miss during tonight's broadcast? Anything else you do still want to talk about or promote? Well, we still got you here live on 97.7 FM this evening. Um, I mean, anything like coming up, I mean, I just, uh, I mean, I got to shout this out here real quick because I got a guy named Lim Payne. And uh, he is, uh, I mean, he's out there. He's got a few songs on Spotify, but I think, um, you know, his, uh, I mean, his, his music is, is cool and he's got some good stuff, but, you know, he's been looking for another producer and ran into me. So we got some stuff that's um, going to kind of knock it out the park. And I think he is the next next guy, you know, because his vocals is, is on point and he's just got this, this, uh, 
his vibe that, you know, it just can't be denied. So that's I'm just putting that name out there just to look out for him. And um and we got a track that's gonna be coming out um soon. So um look out for that one. And actually I'll I'll give you the the name of that track, which is called um Married to the Game. So um, you know, look out for this guy. He he he's a bad guy. And um and then and as far as, as stuff that I'm working on right now, you know, I mean I'm still finishing up um some Eddie G stuff and there's a um there's a track that um you know I would love to get some this I'm I'm looking for a female vocalist to put on there. And one that I'm looking for, I wish if anybody can um give me contact to or if she's listening out there is Miss L A. Because I need her on this track. So but I'm just throwing that out there. But um, outside of that, I would say just, um, you know, I mean, just, just look out. I mean, I got a lot of stuff from, um, you know, working up in the here in the kitchen. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm cooking. I'm cooking. And just um, just be on the lookout, DJ K style. And, um, and can I put my Instagram out there real quick? Uh, most definitely, actually. I, I, I always let individuals give the opportunity just to show people out and, of course, drop them social media handles. Yeah, yeah, if you could do that, because cause, cause my, my Instagram is whack, and I, I need some folks on there <laughs> just um, checking me out. What is um, it's DJ K Style 2000. So anybody that can jump on, and um, as you can see what I'm doing, you can see what I got coming up next, and um, just to stay with me because it's, it's a lot in the works, and I just have a lot that I want to showcase, a lot, lot of stuff I want to let people hear. And also, as well, when you actually gave your uh, Instagram a few moments ago, if you can, would you be able to actually give uh, the rest of your social media handles as well? That way our listeners can follow not only your Instagram, but all your social medias all across the board. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, that's Instagram. Twitter is um, DJ K Style 2000 also. Um, my uh, Facebook is DJ K Style. And... What's the other one? The TikTok, and that one is DJ K Style 2000. And I gotta say, first, and I just gotta say, first and foremost, K Style, thank you so much, man, for just giving us a bit of your time here this evening and just blessing us with some of these amazing stories. And of course, this unreleased exclusive song out in them streets, man, that I'm actually gonna be playing. It's definitely an honor to chop it up with a with a legendary West Coast individual like yourself, man. And hopefully down the line we can make this happen again sometime soon. Hey, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate you putting me out there. I mean, it, this is a good thing that you're doing. And, um, hey, hey, man, man, the straight love for me. And don't don't forget to play that My City also, because that, that's another banger from J.D. Hey, I already got that in rotation, man. I was trying I was trying to give the guy, I trying to give the, list, little, li, the listeners a little bit of a surprise, but they, they definitely know it's coming now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I but, you, bro. Hey, you are most certainly welcome, K Style. Thank you so much, man. Nothing but love from out here in Canada, man. And I'm pretty sure we definitely shall talk again soon, man. But for now, definitely have a phenomenal Tuesday evening. Hey, you do the same thing. I right, appreciate you. Appreciate you out there in Radio Land. I appreciate you as well. Thank you so much, Style. All right, thank you. <laughs>